Philip Leinert betoner med en klædelig, men malplaceret beskedenhed, at han blot er menigt medlem af den Lizzy. I'm just part of the group, you know, in country, so what people think. I don't dominate the group of first and to do stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a coalition, it's like, it's... A contribution by everybody from the band, you know. Men den Lizzy særlige appel ligger i Phil Leinerts person. Han er søn af en sort brasiliansk sømand og en irsk kvinde. Just before Lizzy happened, I was at school. Me and Brian used to go to school. And uh, we were in, like, little bands together, you know. We used to play charity concerts. And midweek I'd play, say, the folk circuit with an acoustic guitar. And there would be poets reading poetry. And then I'd come up and I'd play a couple of songs. And, you know, so that's how things. So I used to just do the gigs midweek for the uh, couple of free points and uh, some spending money. Eric Bell left because of the success of the band. He, he, he didn't like to dress up. He didn't like photos. He didn't like flying to other countries to mine, to records. He didn't like all the trivia. He didn't like how much of his personal life was getting taken up. So one night he just kicked his arm before he off stage, smashed his guitar and walked off. Yeah, it's the wrong way to look at it, really. Nobody said that to be in a group was a marriage and you had to be there forever. And we really thought we'd arrived, you know. So my head just went... I got really, I became really big-headed, conceited, thought I was great, thought I could do everything, take everything, screw everything, you know, and uh, I tried and got hepatitis, <laughs> and uh, that put me on my back, and then we took it a little easier. I couldn't drink for a year, and that really turned my head around. Because being straight for a year after living the way I was living really was like a shock to my system. I think it's a shock to any Irishman's system when he can't have a drink. Da han er for at opleve sådan lidt på afstand, skrev Phil Leinert en sang om de kunstige stimulanser. The media have always tried to give me an image. They've tried to put me in a bag and say that All there is to this guy is a pair of leather trousers and studs. And he thinks he's the greatest womanizer in the world. Uh, and yet, when I do the poetry, this conflicts with it. And so then they go, he's a romantic. Den mest groteske fejlbedømmelse er, at den Lizzie opstod omkring singlen Killer on the Loose. Sangerne er rent faktisk en ubarmhjertig udlevering af manden, hvis hele liv består i at nedlægge damer. Men diverse engelske kvindeorganisationer misforstod sangen fuldstændig. I wasn't misunderstood by a lot of people. I was misunderstood by a lot of fucking jerks. No. Sorry about cursing. I was misunderstood by some very misguided females who seem to think that to talk about women and like they seem to get the impression that I was trying to glorify rape and I, I don't think there comes a time when they go uh, hey Mick the authority now um, here's your girl watch we'd like to thank you very much for your contribution to rock and roll uh, you are now retired <laughs> you know I don't i think that's a, a fallacy that uh, I th uh, that only young people can play music. I, I don't think that's true. I think you know anybody can, any age can play music. Men Philip Leinert har længe følt den Lizzie's to guitar, bass og trommer besætning som en hindring for en musikalsk udvikling. See, working with the Lizzie because there's two lead guitarists, keyboards, bass, drums. In a way. It's restricting. It's also a great challenge, which keeps the band really interesting for me. But in a way, it's it's restricting. So when I do the solo stuff, I'm totally free. I mean, I don't even have to sing. Phil Leinert's first solo success came when the Lizzy guitarist Gary Moore was sent a solo LP and back on the street in 1978. Phil Leinert's Rio spilled bass or sang for singlen Parisian Walkways. 
sometimes I get tired of living out somebody else's dream, being what somebody else wants me to be. But the more I wrote about it, the more I realised everybody lives out somebody else's dream.